All right, campers. This is the day the Lord has made. Once again, we shall rejoice mightily and be glad in it. Let's pray. Father, we thank you again in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We know without you, we can do nothing. But with you, nothing is impossible. So, Father, we purpose in our hearts that we never do anything without first asking your blessings upon it. Bless us, we pray. Bless our ears to hear. Bless our eyes to see that which is invisible. We'll be careful to give you the glory, honor, and praise. We bind Satan in the name of Jesus according to your word. Father, you said whatever we bind on earth has been bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth, we loose in heaven. So we loose the Holy Spirit while Satan is bound. Have your way in each and every one of us. We decrease so that you may increase. In Jesus' name, amen. To uh, quotes first from the Word of God, because always the Word of God is eternal. It makes, no never, it makes no difference what people say if it doesn't line up with the Word of God. That's my standard. That's the plumb line with me. If God says it, that settles it. Not if God says it, I believe it, that settles it. That's wrong. If God says it in his word, that settles it. So, two passages, short passages of scripture in the Old Testament, the prophetic book of Jeremiah, chapter four, starting in verse one and two. The prophet says, if you will return, O Israel, says the Lord, return to me. And if you will put away your abominations out of my sight, then you shall not be moved. And you shall swear that the Lord lives in truth, in judgment, and in righteousness. And the nations shall bless themselves in him, and in him they shall glory. That's a promise from God. That if we repent and turn back to God, whether as individuals or whether as our nation, God says he will honor us and bless us. Conversely, if we don't do it, we'll destruct. That's the bottom line. And then a couple verses later, Jeremiah rebukes the people. And in verse 22, he says, for my people are foolish, for they have not known me. They are silly children, and they have no understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. Ouch. They have PhDs when it comes to thinking up craziness and evil. But when it comes to doing good, they miss the mark. Now, one quote from our founder, Thomas Jefferson. And he says, the good sense of the people will always be found to be the best army. They, the people, may be led astray for a moment, but will soon correct themselves. Title of this presentation is A Time for Truth, Color, Communism, and Common Sense. This book here, Cam Constitution Presents Color, Communism, and Common Sense by Manning Johnson. It's amazing how we at Cam Constitution found this piece. We reprinted, we reprinted it. I was with Mr. Shirtliff at his house a couple years ago. We were up in his attic, and in a box of books that he had, this was kind of standing up in the box that all I could see was color, communism, and common sense in black and white. I said, what is that, Mr. Sherliff? I pulled it down and I looked at it and I said, I started to read it. It's a short work. I said, we need to, through Cam Constitution Press, we need to republish this and reprint this. So we did. And Mr. Sherliff says, Rev, why don't you write the forward? Which I did, and I'll read the forward to you before we go into the slides. In the booklet entire, entitled Color, Communism, and Common Sense, written by Manning Johnson, who you'll see a picture of him in a second, a former black communist who became an American patriot, we now have a serious need for a time for truth. And for this reason, we here at Camp Constitution Press have taken on the responsibility to reprint this material which was originally published in 1958. 
Despite the presidential post-election victory of President-elect Donald Trump, that's when we, when we reprinted the thing, when he, was, when he had just won, America finds herself hopelessly divided based on cultural, spiritual, and political issues along racial, religious, and ethnic, ethnic lines. For example, in the political divide, many Trump supporters believe Hillary Clinton should be sent to prison, while Clinton supporters believe Trump supporters are a basket of deplorables holding views of racism, sexism, homophobia, and bigotry. However, a time for truth requires that we, who are American patriots, regardless of race, regardless of religion, regardless of ethnicity, recognize that the communist plot to destroy our constitutional republic through the tactics of divide and conquer. For example, with the issue of racial conflict, communist propaganda places the blame for all the problems in black America at the door of so-called white privilege. This false belief of white privilege causes the black minority to feel sorry for themselves, blame others for their failures, ignore countless opportunities that are available to all in America, hold bitterness and jealousy of the success of other racial and cultural groups, and look for easy solutions as a substitute for reality. When I read that, I said, ouch. But this is a black man who was a communist that wrote this. So they can't play the race card there. As an American, conservative, patriotic, minister of the Lord Jesus Christ who happens to be black by God's design, I have dedicated my life to speaking truth to the lies of communist propaganda. And then I give the scripture. Because many times what we don't understand, we're trying to deal with spiritual problems from a secular solution. It does not work. It's nothing more than putting band-aids on malignant four-stage cancer. When you have a spiritual root to a problem, you have to deal with the problem the same way, spiritually. We cannot solve political problems with um, spiritual problems with political solutions. It doesn't work. All it does at best is make us frustrated. The scripture I use to debunk this lie is 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 through 5. And it declares, for though we live in human bodies, we are not carrying out our spiritual warfare according to human reasoning, by using human weapons. For the weapons of our warfare are not physical weapons, but they are mighty spiritual weapons of God for the overthrow and destruction of satanic strongholds. We refute arguments, in this case communism, and every proud thing that sets itself up against God, and we bring every thought and every purpose into the obedience of Christ Jesus, our Lord. This is our vision, CAM Constitution. I only have a few of these left over on my salt and light table for a small donation to the ministry to give you the morality and freedom. This is the one I spoke on Monday, uh, God's, uh, America, God's uh, uh, Godly Heritage. And then this one, you can read both of them, uh, Color Communism and Common Sense. So we're gonna go into that. Okay, I'm glad you're already, okay, you're ahead of the game. Stay on your game. In the web, that's Manning Johnson right there, he's dead. Manning Johnson was once a participant on the highest level of the communist conspiracy in America. He observed the cold, calculating, ruthless nature of red power politics and political warfare, stripped of all of its illusionary propaganda and idealistic cover. But later on, due to his intelligence and Christian upbringing, he revolted against the obscene immorality of the Communist Party. Just give you short synopsis of this guy. He grew up in the Christian church, but because there was so much quote unquote prejudice and racism 
that he saw in the so-called Christian church because in the true body of Christ there can be no Jew, no Greek, no black, no white, no male, nor female. We are one in Jesus Christ. That's the reason why, brothers and sisters, you heard me say Monday on the other presentation that you cannot be a racist if you believe in creation. But you are a racist even if you don't recognize it if you believe in evolution. Most people don't know that. But that's the truth. But the way Satan has flipped the script to make you think just the opposite. Eh? So this guy, Manning Johnson, because he had saw with his own eyes the hypocrisy in the so-called Christian church, Satan sent to him a false black minister who was basically practicing liberation theology, which is nothing but Marxism with a religious veneer. Some guy named Archibald. And Archibald convinced him that the only true friend of the minorities were the communists. And Manning Johnson brought that lie. So he joined the local communist party at that time and renounced the church as being a bunch of religious hypocrites and racists hiding behind religion. Sound familiar, y'all? So then what happened? Once the local Communist Party began to see that this guy had really the gift of communication and he was sharp, they said, we're going to train this guy up at the highest level. We're going to send him to the Kremlin to be trained by the masters. And then we're going to bring him back to America to fool all the black folks. Well, at that time they were called Negroes. So that's what's in the book. That was the term back then in the 50s. And then we'll send him back after we train him at the highest level of communism. We'll send him back to America to deceive all of the black, all of the Negroes to join the Communist Party. Does anybody here make the connection and, and connect the dots of seeing why so many black people today sitting up in church are Marxists and don't even know it? Hello, somebody. But what happened was, once he got over there in Moscow, and got started to get trained in high level Marxism, he began then to see what the real deal was. That it had nothing to do with a uh, friend of the poor. That it was nothing but a cold, wicked, calculating scheme to use the masses, like in a chess game, as pawns to deceive the people by using what always works, the race card. Divide them. That's the reason why, since I've known Mrs. Sherliff and been a part of Cam Constitution since 2009, I tell all of my people, black and white, if you love America, you got to work together. Forget all this nonsense about conservative, red, blue, uh, uh, up, down, liberal, conservative, that Republican, Democrat. That's a bunch of foolishness. It's nothing but division. Do you love God or don't you? Boom. Are you saved or not? Boom. Are you godly or ungodly? Boom. Forget all that other nonsense. It's game. So that's what happened. So then once he figured out what the real game was, he left Russia with them thinking he was going to be another Jesse Jackson or Shopton or this one or that one. And then when he got back to the States, he renounced communism, gave up the game, told it what it was really about, wrote that book, Color Communism and Common Sense. Then all of a sudden, he had an accident. <laughs> and he died. Uh huh. See, these old boys, these commies, they don't play. They're serious. I wish the body of Christ was as dedicated to righteousness as these communists are dedicated to evil. We'd have turned this thing right side up yesterday. Next, Caleb. Subverting Negro churches, white ministers acting as mis missionaries, they were really communist ministers, using the race angle as bait, aided in the cultivation of Negro ministers for work in the red solar system of organizations, NAACP, black, New Black Panthers, on and on and on, Antifa. All this stuff is plotted, planned, y'all. Has that ever you ever thought about how in God's name you have an incident on Monday and by Monday night you got 50,000 people with signs and the same shirt on at the same place at the same time? 
there's no way this stuff is spontaneous. It's all laid out. It's a diabolic, a di diabolical plan st straight out the pits of hell. And we're trying to deal with this mess with politics? It won't work. He says bribery. The communists would bribe these, these black uh, preachers. Bribery through gifts, paid lectures, flattery through long applause at stage rallies, favorable mention in the red control press were not the only methods employed to corrupt the Negro ministers. They also used sex and perversion as a means of political blackmail. He says in the book, one of the things that he learned when he was in Moscow is that they would take white communist women and have sex with these communist black men with hidden cameras in the place and then use that as blackmail so that if the black ministers decided to renounce communism, boom, they had them. Or they would use perversion, homosexuality, or lesbianism for the same thing. Hey, y'all, this stuff is dead serious. Next, red plot to use Negroes. That's the uh, communist paper, the, pre the People's Tribune. This was written way back Juneteenth, 1975. Free the Negro nation. The only thing that's changed now is that free the black nation. And the term they use now is liberation. But the scriptures tell us they will promise you liberty while they're in themselves are in bondage and they're bringing you into bondage while promising you liberty. The apostle Peter tells us that in 2 Peter. That's the reason why I don't listen to anybody or any theory or, ide or ideology that, that contradicts the word of God. If God says it in the Bible, that settles it. Not if God says it and I believe it, that settles it. If it's in that Bible, boom, you got Reverend Kraft on your side. If it, the Bible con contradicts it, I don't want to hear it. Get out of my face with it. Red plot to use Negroes. Listen, y'all. Staring up race and class conflict is the basis of all discussion of the Communist Party's work in the South. Well, that was during the Jim Crow era. Forget, you can take the word South out of it now. You can, use, you can say around the world. Satan, through communists and Marxist ideology, have always used the masses. Why the masses? Because the masses are the majority, not the elite. But the elite have the power. They're called the insiders, the conspiracy. But the masses have the numbers. Why do you think we have open borders? Why do you think the Republicans or the Democrats have not put a stop to this mess? Because they both have an advantage of open borders. They're both wicked. They're just two sides of the same coin. The evil genius Stalin and the other uh, 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 maniacs, uh, leaders in Moscow, ordered the use of all racial, economic, and social differences, no matter how small or insignificant, to start local fires of discontent, conflict, and revolt. Look what they said. Who could tell which of these issues would start a general conflict of fire that would sweep across, let's take out the word south and put it across the world. That's why when you hear all this nonsense now on television, I don't care what the, what, what the issue is. Boom, all it takes is one spark, boom, to set it off. That's why whoever was speaking yesterday, talking about the Civil War, you better believe it, baby. I think, it was, I think it was you, Mr. McManus. Civil War. So somebody, we're right there. Civil War. If we don't get together and, get, and take the battle to them and tell people what the real skinny is and what's really going down, we can't afford to be silent. I was telling uh, Ms. Ms. Deborah yesterday, I said, I can't wait to stop working in that factory that I got to go to so that I can get out here, me and Mrs. Kraft, full time, and the only thing they can do to me is send me to heaven. Because this stuff is dangerous. We're just about on the brink of losing our country in a second civil war based on race. Because everybody's scared to talk about the big R. You talk about economics. 
We can talk about all these other issues, politics, and our differences in that, but don't talk about race. No, you got to talk about it. Next. Being of, uh, being of red integration. Many ne Negro intellectuals, that's your professors, artists, professionals, etc., were carried away with this outburst of interracialism. Here was an opportunity to be accepted by other racial groups, especially Caucasians. Secretly, they, the Negroes, always wanted to get away from other Negroes. Where did that idea come from? Slavery. The house Negroes versus the field Negroes. This thing is so deeply implanted in black people. That's why I tell people all the time, you need to have strong black patriot conservatives that you will support to put them on the front line because they're the only ones who can conflict, can confront this mess, and at the same time, the race card has no power over. Secretly, they always wanted to get away from other niggas. Moving around among whites would somehow add to their stature and endow a feeling of importance. It's self-hatred. And people talk about when you hear all this talk about black solidarity. That's a lie from hell. There's no black solidarity. How in the world are going to be black solidarity and blacks are killing each other every five minutes in the hood? So they went after communist interracialism like a hog going after slop. Next. Destroy the opposition. The awesome spectacle of the array of forces in all walks of life, potent and with ample money, cold-blooded, and efficiently going about the job of destroying the reputation and influence of those designated as enemies of communism. Keep many in line and enforce silence. That's why there's silence. They must be discredited and isolated from the masses. So in addition to the tags of enemy of the race, tool of the white ruling class, traitors to the race, the reds have added the, the whatever that word is, I'll pray them, the a bad word, of Uncle Tom. <laughs> Uncle Tom. So they can't call me a racist, so they call me an Uncle Tom. But they don't even know the history of the true Uncle Tom. Uncle Tom was anything but a coward. In fact, Uncle Tom gave his life. When you read uh, uh, Harriet's uh, book, uh, Uncle Tom's Cabin, Uncle Tom was a preacher who was a slave in, uh, uh, in that book, in reality. And the wicked slave master, a guy named Simon Legree, who was an evil slave master, was so harsh on his slaves that he would beat the slave. He, he was a preacher as well. He would go to church, preach to the slaves, then come home after church on Sunday and whip the slaves. Two of the slave women got tired of that and they escaped into the swamps. Uncle Tom knew where they were. And Simon Legree told Uncle Tom, if you don't tell me where they're at, I'm going to have my two overseers who were also black slaves, who were so-called Uncle Tom's, whip you to death. And Uncle Tom says, you can kill me, but I'll never turn over those two slaves. You can read that in, in, Harry, in, in Uncle Tom's cabin. That's the real Uncle Tom. Uncle Tom was a patriot and he had guts. Those two Overseers who were black beat him to death. But what did the commies do? They took that man's name, Uncle Tom, and twisted it into some madness. So now, in the 21st century, people like me, people like Miss Kraft, who stand for the narrow, straight and narrow truth are called Uncle Toms. And you all who have a lighter complexion are called racists. And you think the commies are playing? Look at some of those terms here. Uncle Tom. How about the one fascist? When was the last time you heard that, y'all? A couple minutes ago on the news? How about the next one? Nazi. How about the next one? Anti-Semitic. How about the next one? Radical right. 
How about the next one? Extremists. How about the next one? Racist. And how about the last one? Hater. Hate group. Once a year, on Labor Day, I go down to the beach in a boardwalk in, in Ocean Grove, uh, New Jersey, me and my wife. She sings patriotic songs that I preach. It's a place called a pavilion where we set up our equipment there and preach. She sings and people are walking by on the boardwalk. They hear me preaching, they won't come up under the thing and sit down. They, hey man, he crazy. But they're walking. They're worshiping the sun. Huh? And they're walking by. And then when I first started doing it, I would get discouraged because only be maybe five people under the pavilion. But then the Lord rebuked me, let me know. No, they hear you <laughs> as they're walking. So last year, when I preached this thing, I'm preaching. My back is to the boardwalk and the ocean's behind me. And all of a sudden, I hear some woman holler out, You hate it! Stop your hating, she said. <laughs> Reverend Kraft spun. I looked at her, I pointed the old figure at her. I said, Mama, Reb is not a hater. I don't hate you. In fact, I love you so much, I want you to come out of that lifestyle you're in and get delivered and saved because Jesus loves you. I don't hate you. But I hate the sin you're caught up in. Guess what she did? She didn't give Reverend Kraft no more lip. She kept it moving. <laughs> and she called me a hater. Because she was in a same sex thing. And she thought she was, oh, she called me a hater. I told her, I don't hate you. If I hated you, I'd leave you alone. Let you die and bust hell wide open. I don't hate you. In fact, I love you so much, I want you, man, to be saved and delivered and come up out of that madness. But I hate the sin you're doing. You know why? Because God hates it. God hates it so much, he sent Jesus to die for it on the cross, just like he did for fornicators, adulterers, liars, drinkers, alcoholics, dope fiends, and every greedy people, and every other sin. I don't hate you. But I hate that sin just like any other sin. My sin was I was a junkie, a heroin addict for years. If I hadn't got saved in 1977, I wouldn't be standing up here today with you. I, I would have busted hell wide open. Next. The real Uncle Toms. The top white communist leaders know that racial as well as other differences between people have existed over a long span of years. Well, he wrote that, he, Manning wrote that long span of years. It's been on from the beginning of time. No long span of years, it's always existed. But that, I'm just quoting what he put in the book. And will continue to exist even after centuries of re-education under communist rule. They also know that these differences can be used to play race against race, Nationality against nationality, class against class, et cetera, et cetera, male against female, on and on and on and on and on. To do what? To advance the cause of communism using the disguise of liberation. American Negroes subvert themselves to the new leftist plantation and become the real Uncle Toms. That's why this old boy here Kanye West, I don't believe he's a true patriot. I don't believe he's a patriot at all. He's rich. He made money off the system. That's why when you hear these knuckleheads like Colin Kaepernick, take the knee, yeah, I'll, I'll take your knee all right. <laughs> a jive quarterback, multi-millionaire, ain't gonna talk some nonsense. We gotta run away. That old boy there, Kanye West, he ain't serving the Lord, but he got enough sense to know that there's no other country on planet Earth that you can start at the bottom and with hard work and determination go to the top. They all know that. They're not stupid. That's why I told you all Monday, don't be calling people uh, incompetent and stupid because they don't think and agree with you. No, everybody has, has expertise in something and everybody is ignorant in other things. 
So if that's the case, everybody's incompetent about something. No, wicked? Yes. How do we judge them as wicked? If they don't line up with what God says, they're wicked. If they line up with what God says, they're righteous. God only has two classes of people, the righteous and the wicked. There is no other classes. Has nothing to do with the color of skin and all that foolishness. But the devil's people, mainly from the top down, throughout the world, these commies know every game. And they work these games and work them with professionalism and cold-bloodedness. And we're getting it from the horse's mouth from a black ex-communist that was right over there and learned this stuff firsthand. Next. Creating hate. The red propaganda distort facts concerning racial differences for ulterior motives. All, now listen to this, y'all. All the right is not on the Negro side. Neither is all the wrong. Good point. And the same holds true with regard to the white man's side. The repository of good or evil is not to be found in any peculiar, I mean, particular race. Black men are just as good or just as bad as white men. Yellow men are just as good or as bad as brown or red. It ill behoves, behooves anyone to speak about the other. What's the scriptural principle behind that? Simple, Romans 3, 23. All, all, what does all mean? It means all. All have sinned and come short of God's glory. There is none. What does none mean? Zilch. None that does righteous. No, not one. That's why I don't use terms like the Republicans and the Democrats. The right and the left. The red and the blue. The black and the white. The male and the female. That's all bunko. It's propaganda. We're either saved or lost. We're the righteous or unrighteous. <laughs> Creating hate. All. Jesus died for all. He rose for all. There is no, this group is right, that group is wrong. No. If they're human, we're all born in sin. Jesus didn't say, I came to die for certain folks. He came to die, Jesus said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever means that, whosoever. That's why, brothers and sisters, we can get all the politicking and all the economics, we can get all that straight. But if you don't get the spiritual straight, you're just spinning your wheels. That's why I told somebody Monday, <laughs> there ain't no way in the world they, I'd be in Washington. <laughs> no. <laughs> they wouldn't put up Reverend Kraft for hot New York Minute. <laughs> but if I ever get a chance to get up in there as a preacher and a prophet, guess what? <laughs> they might kill me, but they're going to hear the truth. Next. We all know who that rascal is. He ain't the only one. But he's behind a lot of it. <laughs> Modern day carpetbaggers. Oh, old Georgie boy. Georgie Slick. The media of public information is far from free of communists. Yeah, commies control the media. And fellow travelers who operate under the disguise of liberalism. They are ready at all times to do an effective smear job, and yet they do it effectively. Among these red tools may be found editorial writers, columnists, news commentators, analysis in the press, in radio, and TV. And they go overboard in giving top news coverage to racial incidents fomented by the leftists and also those incidents that are interpreted so as to show biased attitudes of whites against Negroes. This is a propaganda hoax aimed not at helping the Negro, but at casting America in a bad light. Why? In order to destroy his prestige and influence around the world. They, Madden Johnson wrote that in 58. He could have wrote that last night. That's, that slide that, we, that I just had Kayla put up when you saw all those, those hoodlums stomping on that police car. That was Baltimore, y'all. That was Baltimore. 
Baltimore where that happened. So when our president, when President Trump told Elijah Cummins, you coming in here and telling me something about the border, why don't you go back to Baltimore and fix that mess? Yep. Rats and roaches and all that. Did Cummins back down? No, Cummins came right back at him and said, you're a racist. That's what got on the news and keep pumping it. That's why I, I said, Lord, me and, Mama, me and Mrs. Pratt's prayer is, Lord, help our beloved president to put a watch on his mouth. Because every, Jesus says every idle word that we speak, we will give an account of on judgment day. Donald, I love you, but you talk too much. Take the high road. Stop going tit for tat with these people. Because everything you say, they're going to twist it. And what gets twisted is what's going to get on the air and go all over the world, man. Shut up. It takes two to tangle. It's not slick of every time they say something crazy or whoever it is, he comes back with something else crazy. It does not work. God himself, Jesus didn't do that. Bam, who hit you, master? He didn't say a word. He said not a mumbling word. If you're the Christ, tell us. Bam, he didn't say a word. It takes guts to restrain ourselves through the fruit of the Holy Spirit which is self-control but when we have diarrhea in the mouth diarrhea in the mouth gets us in trouble look all these people black lives matter stop white oppression I am God and on and on and on Come, you see that every day in one form or the other Next, R race pride is passe. The Negro businessman has always been a chief target of the commies. They despise the black businessman because of his conservatism. They label him a tool of the white imperialists and an enemy of the Negro masses. Such labels are reserved for those who the Reds plan to liquidate. And since the Negro businessman is an inspiration and example to other Negroes to take advantage of the countless opportunities of the free enterprise system, he is therefore an object of derision by the commies, an enthusiastic response of the Negro to the appeal and opportunities for Negro business is a cardinal bulwark against communism. That's a good point. Consequently, the Reds seek to discredit, discourage, and liquidate black business. Why do you think there's not that, that many black businesses? There it is right there. There it is. See, this communist business is deep. They have it down to a science. And if Reverend Kraft can do anything in this lecture is to get you guys to really start thinking about why we have to come up with a new paradigm. Next is the last slide. One of my favorites, Booker T. Washington, who has a university that he started. He was a slave, Tuskegee in Alabama. But he loved this country. But you don't hear any talk about him. And when you hear talk about him, it's always he was Uncle Tom. But yet you hear a whole lot of talk about W.E.D. Du Bois and all these communist black uh, uh, intellectuals and professionals who they parade around on, on mass media. Booker T. Washington's philosophy of education, and he was a slave, was to prepare the majority of Negroes through vocational strength or uh, training when they came out of slavery into reconstruction to play a vital role in the rapidly developing American economy before and after the turn of the century. He undoubtedly foresaw the process of industrialization, the ensuing demand for trained qualified personnel, an example of skilled, in, of skilled tradesmen who could be relied upon to do a job efficiently and well. Such training would have enabled the Negro to maintain his favorite position after slavery and place him in a better competitive position against immigrants in the labor market. Booker T stressed pride of race, home ownership, land ownership, along with industrial and agricultural training. He had it right. But does he get favorable press? You don't hear him mention. And he was a slave. But yet he built a university that exists to this day, a major black university. 
Tuskegee. Sometimes I think about it, I wonder if I was to go to Tuskegee today and do a petition, a survey, to see how many of those students at Tuskegee really follows their founder's philosophy. I might just do that. That'd be interesting, an interesting study to see how many students today at Tuskegee still adhere to the founder's vision. Or even know what it is. Even know what, thank you, thank you. Even know what it is. See, we're in a bad place here in America, y'all. And this stuff's gonna keep getting worse and worse and worse. Mrs. Debbie, she let me read one of her books on this UN nonsense about population control. Part of Agenda 21. I'm working on something right now, Mayafa 21. How many of you in here are familiar with Mayafa 21? Oh, just, just a couple of you. Mayafa means crises in Swahili. And what Mayafa 21, again, talking about the 21st century, it talks about that when slavery ended, then there was no more use for the slaves. So the elitists and the eugenicists came up with a plan, working with an evil woman named Margaret Sanger, to, to figure out ways to get rid of all blacks. And that's where we got Planned Parenthood from. And Mr. Shirtliff then took me to the house of the man. Where was, where was that city? Clarence. Clarence Campbell, Dr. Campbell. He took me to the man's house. And gave me something to read, a letter that Margaret Sanger had wrote to this man about we have to hire black ministers with social service backgrounds so that the blacks won't think we're trying to get rid of them when in fact they were that's why in every every planned parenthood is either in a minority hispanic or black community that's why you have an international planned parenthood because like i told miss debbie <laughs> makes no difference on the economic side if you're born dead what difference does it make without life that's why the founders gave us life first life liberty and then the pursuit of happiness because if you're born dead if you're dead before you, you're alive what good is the rest of it so what did the devil come up with kill them before they get here through abortion or if they're coming out with other wound kill them again kill them anyhow Anytime you take a position that says uh, you can kill them after they're born, we're in bad shape. Oh, you're too old. Reverend Crabb, you're 75. You got to go. Pop! <laughs> and on and on. These folks mean business. They mean business. Eh? But like I told her, I said, the population bomb, as they say, in that book, she let me read Baby Bomb. That was the, in, in the book. That book right there, Restore Mission. Baby Bomb. The UN is telling kids, you got to tell your parents not to have children. <laughs> we got too many people on planet Earth, and we got to save the planet. What? Save the planet? Did you create the planet? Fool? You won't save something you can't even save yourself. The first verse in the Bible, in the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. Nothing hey, what you talking about, you gonna save the planet. You didn't make it. How you gonna save it? That's man playing God. Where did that idea come from? It came from Satan telling Adam and Eve. Oh. Did God really say that you couldn't eat of every tree in the garden? Did he really say that? That plants doubt in your mind. It started off in the, from the get-go with Adam. God knows when you eat of that tree, uh-huh, the one that God said you better not eat, then you'll be like God. And you'll be able to know what's good and what's evil. Oh, that's just a fairy tale, Reverend. You went to Harvard Divinity School, graduated in 1996 with a Master's in Divinity, Reverend Kraft. Surely, surely you don't believe that story, do you? Yeah, I believe it. You know why? Because that's exactly the way human beings act. 
And Satan hasn't changed up his lie because it still works. I'll be my own God. Knowing what's good and what's evil. That's called relative morality. Moralism. I'll figure out for myself what's right and wrong. If God says it's right, it's right whether nobody believes it. And if God says it's wrong, it's wrong if everybody believes it. All right, we're done. You get anything out of this, y'all? <laughs> By your heads. By your heads. Father, we thank you. I thank you, first of all, for Mr. Shirtliff taking me up in his attic. <laughs> That's how I found color communism and common sense. Mr. Shirtliff, it's your fault. You shouldn't have took me up in your attic. <laughs> in Jesus' name, bless my people, bless everyone in this house. Let them know that we're fighting a formidable enemy who is not playing. Lord, you said in your word in John 10.10, 10, Satan the thief comes only to steal, kill, and then destroy. But you didn't leave it there, Lord. You said, but you have come that we may have life and life more abundant. So help us, Father, to take this thing to the next level. We'll give you the glory, the honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah, I got a few of these left. I don't want to take them back. Small donation, and you can have it.